Two activists that I really respect, Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, and Daniel Johnson, founder of uh, Panda, People Against the NDAA, um, have, have just been victim. Well, they've been, there was an attempted setup, attempt, an attempt to try to frame them for something that's very, very disturbing. And I want to go ahead and just hand the, the mic straight to, to Stuart to let him describe what happened. Um, so go ahead, Stuart. Go ahead and let us know what happened there. Well, what happened is last night, um, somebody using a Tor Mail account impersonating me emailed Dan Johnson and in the email it said, hey, I've got new resolutions for you that a team of lawyers and I put together and here they are and there are PDF attachments. Dan saw it was a Tor Mail account, realized it wasn't really for me and did not open the attachments but he did consult his uh, security expert and he was able to, to determine that there are in these PDFs embedded inside of them were child porn images. And so what this was is someone was trying to get Dan to open up these, these uh, PDFs and download child porn onto his computer. And so that was a direct attack on him, but also, um, also an attack on me because it purported to be from me and had my name embedded and Oathkeeper's name embedded in the files. And so that's the backdrop. And what this really is is, is, is part of a continuing program. We just saw this happen to Luke Radowski on July 3rd, almost the exact same thing. Someone claiming to be a whistleblower that had photos of the Bilderbergers, committing photos, um, emailed Luke Radowski and, and tried to get him to open the images. But he was able to use a viewer to see that they were child porn and he didn't open them. Now, the same thing that was done to Luke has now been attempted against Dan Johnson and by extension me, because they tried to, to impersonate me. And so that's the, kind of the backdrop of what's happening here. And what we, we want to do is warn against this, but we'll let we'll Dan explain the particulars. We also have, we have the email here, so I'm going to go ahead and put that up here on the screen so that people can see it. Um, and we have the screenshots from up close, and we also have more specifics on the, um, on the actual attachments here. So there were several files, and as you can see, they were really attempting to make it look like it was a communication from Stuart, and they actually did enough research to actually uh, use his correct phone number and to frame it as if these were activist-related uh, activities. So, Dan, could you go ahead and explain a little bit from your end what you what you saw from this, and and also maybe bring in Garrett because he was the technical analyst who who looked at it. Absolutely, I'll bring in Garrett for for some more technical detail technical details on this. But uh, last night around 8 p.m. Eastern. I received an email from someone masquerading as Stuart, uh, a spook email account, uh, and uh, um, did not open none of the attachments, was able to look at the, the text of the email, and it, it seemed to be from Stuart, but the first clue is the Tormail account. Uh, I've never gotten an email from him with Tormail and, and didn't expect to. And the, the second clue was a bunch of attachments, and I'm sure as many people have heard in a lot of internet security, either seminars or videos or what have you, do not open attachments people you do not know, and open attachments you're not expecting. And so uh, I did not open the attachments, uh, and instead I sent them on to uh, my internet security tech, and um, he was able to, he'll go into details on that in a second, but having seen uh, what happened to Luke Rodowski and having him post his emails and what he got, um, watch out for something like this. And it was a little more advanced though, they're learning. Uh, and this is a warning to activists, they're learning. is a little more advanced because when Luke was sent the uh, email, he was given images. Uh, the, the images popped up in preview because they just sent him raw JPEGs. Well, however, when I got this email, um, I only suspected there were images in there because I was sent PDFs. And as you can see in the screenshot, uh, you're not seeing any preview here at all. Uh, just a suspicion on my part because of what happened to Luke. And so I, I sent him over to uh, to our internet security a guy. And and what uh, what did you kind of uh, note there? So, so this is Garrett. You're you're the internet security uh, expert for Panda. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Um, what we ended up finding is I I took the I took the files apart and embedded them. We found the actual JPEGs. 
Um, and he is correct. You won't be able to preview these kind of things in, in your uh, normal email clients or in your web browser. Uh, you actually have to download them onto your computer, which means the file is on your computer and that, uh, that automatically incriminates you, open or not. Um, and inside the files, I found some metadata uh, showing the author was, or it was, uh, defrauded as uh, Stuart Rhodes, and the uh, company and the organization is registered to is Oath Keepers. So they did target both of them. That's that's pretty bad, yeah. So um, so what, what Garrett did, Garrett, explain what you did. You used a sandbox to look at these. Yep. Um, and just give a little more detail on that, how okay. that works. Yeah, I uh, set up a sandbox here on one of my computers, and I uh, took the files apart. What I did is decompiled them. Um, the, uh, the PDF is actually just a container for the files and the metadata. Uh, so I took all this apart, and I extracted the JPEGs themselves, and, and uh, unfortunately, I, I did see the media. Um, and I did get to take a look at some of the uh, more advanced uh, metadata here, and they did hide a lot of keywords. Um, and it seems to be targeted to be found. Um, they left a lot of keywords that, I mean, if any forensics expert just did a batch search on all of the computers that you may have, just search blindly, he would find these extremely easily. Um, and the way the PDFs are laid out, they seem to be uncompressed. So if they did a, uh, if they did any forensics on the hard drives, um, even if they were deleted, this would be very easily recovered. So they knew what they were doing. So, so, so their intent was to get Dan to open them, and then that would create. Uh, ghost images on his computer and metadata that could later on be recovered, right? Yeah, yep. if, uh, if the data hits your computer or is viewed on your computer, um, that's it. It's on your computer for, well, until your hard drive is scrubbed. One thing I want to... So that was their intent. So, yes. so even, even if he were to open them and they go, oh, God, this is bad stuff, and delete it, it's now on his computer, and later on, they could they could then go in and look for them, or 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 give a tip to the FBI or whatever that Dan Johnson has porn, and then they go and find it, and they find porn images on his computer, and then they find embedded in it metadata that that says Stuart Rhodes and Oathkeepers was the creator, correct? Okay. Yep. And uh, it seems like they they uh, they exploited the fact that you guys are in constant communication, so they they know the way um your organizations function, and they know that you are in partnership, so. Uh, it seems like they definitely tried to exploit that. Right. And, and what's happened in the past with Dan and I is he runs People Against the NDAA, and I help uh, write draft resolutions for state legislatures and counties and sheriffs to nullify the NDAA, and Dan's organization uses those resolutions. Now, this is one thing I want to show people here because um, yeah, Panda has been working specifically against the NDAA. But the Oath Keepers has also been working against the NDA. This is one of. Can you go ahead and explain? Um, I'm going to show the, the billboards one, two, and three. But you can go ahead and just t t explain a little bit about this, Stuart. Right. This, this is the latest campaign of putting billboards. These are down in the Pentagon Station uh, Metro stop on the Washington D.C. Metro line, and the goal is to, to create more Snowdens to get more people who work for the government, whether they're in the Pentagon, the CIA, NSA any of these agencies to come forward and blow the whistle on unconstitutional actions or unconstitutional plans they have knowledge of. It's like Snowden did when he blew the whistle on the NSA spying on Americans. We think it's essential that those who have knowledge like that, that they, that they expose it. And you know, The government wants you to think that truth is treason, speaking out is treason, and well, the exact opposite is true. When our constitution is under assault, silence is treason. That's the message we keep it. We just launched this yesterday. Yesterday was our big official launch of this program. And, you know, we, of course, the people in the NSA and the CIA and, and the intelligence agencies are, are probably not happy with us for doing this. So um, we don't know if this, if whoever did this to Dan and by extension me, we don't know if this is someone inside the government or somebody in the private sector who hates our guts. But the bottom line is, is that because we're standing up against the police state, both Dan and myself, um, and Luke's the same way, because we're standing up against the police state, we're not popular with people who are allies or a part of the police state. Yeah, I see this as a very disturbing trend. It, for anybody who wants the background on this, I highly recommend that you go do a Google search for attempted setup of Luke Rudkowski. And Rudkowski is spelled with R-U-D-K-O-W-S-K. KI because it definitely looks like a pattern. And what's interesting is that there were some follow-up emails from um, Luke Rudkowski where he actually was sent a set of um, 
had an exchange with these these hackers. Maybe Dan, could you explain what we're looking at here? Because you sent me these these images. And, and so essentially, what we're looking at here is uh, one of the warnings that that kept me from opening the attachments in the email from uh, was watching Luke's video and following his his follow-ups on this. These are images from emails that Luke received. This this right here, you, you have the mobile one up. This right here uh, from Luke uh, is an image of uh, the text of the email he got uh, about the whistleblower, the Bilderberg conference. And then the other emails that you were just showing are after he went public. These are the emails he was getting from from this person. Yeah. So they're they're mocking. They're mocking. They're taunting. Yeah. And, One thing I noticed when I read um, it is that it said that they were going to set up other activists. They they actually said that they were going to go after all the big activists. And that was extremely disturbing. Can you can you read that? Can you just read that section out loud? I've never heard of that written. Um I'd like to go find it now. Um let's see. So this is a, this is part of a potentially this is just the same people doing the same thing. Well now, here it is right here. It says, we plan to not just set you up with child porn, but every other alternative media founder and master on the planet. So, right there at the bottom. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's whatever. It could be just this hacker talking tough, but this is a secondary attack, so we definitely know that there is a pattern going on here. I don't know for sure if it's the same people. But one, one thing I want to re reiterate here is that whoever did this is a criminal. And if the government is, is participating in this kind of activity, this is just absolutely despicable because that means that they're handling child porn and they're willing to go you know, access child porn and then send that to activists in order to discredit them. Now, I can't, I personally can't prove that this is government to do that, but who else has motive? And that's just my position. I'm not saying that anybody else in this call has that position, but to me, when I look at your guys, your activism, I mean, for one thing, Dan, your activism dealing with, with, with the NDAA is nonpartisan. Left and right, people people really resonate with that. Americans do not like the NDAA, so there's not very many organizations that I can imagine. It wouldn't be something like Anonymous or anything like that. Anonymous is completely against the NDAA, so the only people that it makes sense that would go after both of you guys is government, and that just to me is well, just, just an indicator of just and, how. And, and, it, and it, it 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 may not be government because both students have enemies in the private sector and enemies in the public sector. Uh, but look whoever, at, look, at, look I mean, at the demonization campaign by the by the SPLC again, you know, and, and, or Mother Jones. Unfortunately, in this political climate, you get you get people who are loyalist, you know, just like you had during the Bush years, loyalist Republicans who demonize anybody who opposed Bush as a traitor. We have the same problem now with people on the left. I mean, a lot of them, not everybody like that, but a lot of them. They perceive anybody who criticizes the Obama administration as being a bunch of racist, uh, white Neanderthals, and that's just how they see things. You know, so it's possible it's a private sector hacker. I just don't know. And and kind of that they use. I mean, this is this is a very very dangerous method they use because um, our society built on innocence until proved guilty. Uh, we've seen it with the word terrorist. The word terrorist, someone merely calls you one, and then the, the public perception seems to be, well, you are trial to prove. And the same thing with, with pedophiles, the same thing with uh, child pornographers along those lines, is this is the type of uh, thing that a, a government or a person would use if they can't discredit the message and they have to discredit the messenger. And so it also kind of proves that our message about how dangerous the NDAA is, about how important it is to honor your oath, it kind of proves how much our message needs to get out there. That people are not attacking them, can't attack the message, so they're willing to go to this length to try to take out the messenger. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you know, and there and there is a pattern. There's a history of like the Cointel program, in the 1960s and 70s against anti-war protesters, against Martin Luther King, against the Black Panthers. So there is that pattern of well-documented government. Uh, intentional targeting of dissidents to snare them. So there, that is a possibility. We just can't prove it. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to you know, make accusations. I can't prove. Hopefully, if Dan takes us to the authorities and demands they do their job, we'll they'll find out who did it. Um, hopefully, it's not one of them. 
that's the thing that disturbs me is just the fact that we to try to get and when you have a climate where the government is so corrupt asking for justice is it's you become this is why this kind of situation where you have such total lawlessness and these security op, security organizations that can operate completely in the shadows is so dangerous and is so wrong because th now who do you go to for justice who do you go to who do you trust and that's something I wouldn't know how to handle this kind of situation personally and I, I, I know you guys are gonna have to deal with this on your own but this is just really an indicator of where we are as a country I think I mean what's necessary for the people to understand is, is we're bringing this out to warn you yeah, because right. this seems like there's a pattern. And that's Luke Radowski, that's Stuart, that's myself, that's three attempted setups. This seems like they're a pattern. So far, they're failing. So far, they're failing at actually setting someone up. And we want to make sure they continue to fail. And we want to make sure, and hopefully the, the authorities are on our side, and hopefully the authorities will go out and and and, and people for what they're doing. However, we want everything out there. And everyone who shares this video, everyone who li likes this video, bring this video because if you know someone in activism, this is beginning to be a pattern. And we want to make sure that we stop it in its track. Make sure this is one of the most unsuccessful attacks they can use because of how down and so kind of pay attention to some of the patterns we're seeing here. We're seeing a Tor mail account. So you're gonna watch out for you want to watch out for emails from Tor mail accounts. We're seeing an increased emphasis on Attachments. So watch out. I, I, I heed the old advice about not opening attachments you don't know, and maybe even being careful about opening attachments people you might know. Because I mean, they tried to use, they tried to smear Stuart. They tried to use Stuart's name uh, to to smear and me. And so uh, I'll account for we're seeing a pattern of kind of a little bit broken English here, and not necessarily all of these are instantaneously. This person is is out to get you. However, it's important that we need to be ever vigilant as people in the Liberty Movement Act. We need to be ever vigilant against this type of stuff because if we can stop this in its tracks, the authorities can stop this in its tracks. And if people are aware of it, awareness is the first defense. And awareness, if you guys are aware of this and people, you, you, you people understand and are aware of it, then we can stop, then we can continue to stop this from happening to any other activist. Any hey, final Garrett, words? Do you have any other, well, I want to ask Garrett if he has any other advice for the viewers on security on the internet and preventing themselves from accidentally downloading Falcon. Um, there's not a lot you can do except for just being smart. You have to filter. You have to filter your emails, filter your instant messages, anything that comes to your home that can be tracked to you. Uh, make sure you know what you're getting before you open it. Um, your files, if they're executables, their images or anything like that, make sure you scan them. Because I have heard of uh, some some activists being targeted um, by viruses or malware, and they've been using that to uh, to inject whatever they need to on their computers and, and possibly frame them. Uh, there have been things like that going on. Um, they, you guys, just need to make sure you know who is coming from, and if you if you think you know who is coming from, you're not absolutely sure. See if you can find an alternate way to contact them just to verify before you open any of the contents. Um, it it just it's you have to protect yourself. That's the most important thing. Okay. Thank you for that one. Stuart, you have any final words? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I think we have to presume that, as Dan said, they've never been able to directly counter our message because our message is simply honor the Constitution, respect the rights of the people, and so of course they have to attack the messenger. And they've been doing this, you know, they, they as anybody on the other side who who doesn't like what we're doing, we don't know if it's the private sector or, or the government, but of course they're going to try to um, smear us any way they possibly can. It's not, it's not a surprise. I think it comes with the territory. So if you're an activist, you should expect this, and you should take precautions and and just be, you know, have your head wrapped around the fact that eventually you're going to be targeted in some way. But just deal with it. You, you've got to speak up. If you guys let yourself be chilled because you're afraid to be on a list or you're afraid to be you know, persecuted by by this method or other methods. Um, You've lost. If you let yourself be chilled like that, you're you're dead in the water. You might as well just just kill yourself. If you're gonna be a free human being, you gotta be unafraid and and don't be deterred. Don't you know? Don't let this kind of stuff deter you from being an activist. If you would as as smart as you can. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on and put, for putting out this warning. It's I think this is very important. Um, 
you want to go ahead and give your, your websites so that people can keep track of what you guys are doing? Let's start with you, Dan. That's people against the NDAA, pandaunite.org. Pandaunite.org. Stuart, do you want to give your information? Sure, it's oathkeepers.org, and they can also go to the oathkeepers.org backslash expose, which is the landing page for these billboards we're putting up outside of intelligence agencies. They can go check out all the billboards. All right, well, thank you so much for coming on, and we'll go ahead and end it there. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks.